I'm an oversharer and you guys are nosy, so today we're gonna have a Q&A. As always, I asked on my community tab as well as Instagram if you had any questions for me, and there were so many good questions this week, so I'm really excited to kick things off. Starting off is, what is one video idea that was so out of left field and crazy that you never thought it would work? How did it end up? The one that immediately comes to mind for me is my Flying Ford Anglias video. Now, if you haven't seen this, I mean, I'm not surprised. It was from a long, long, long time ago, but basically I took like the three Harry Potter Ford Anglia like playset cars and I strapped them to my parents' ceiling fan and then turned it on and made them like spin around so that they actually like were flying. It was really, really fun. And I honestly didn't think it was gonna work. Like there were some parts, like I guess like when I tried to do the green screen stuff that just like were not working and I really had to workshop things. But overall, I'm really, really happy with that video. It was definitely very crazy, very chaotic and a lot of fun to film. And like, if you guys want to know as well, like know what my favorite videos are that I've made. I have a playlist on the channel called Greatest Hits Album. Those are all of my favorites in case you, I guess you ever want to know like what I'm most proud of on this channel. How do I order my pieces or are they in a bin of despair? I mean, it's a mix of both. I will go and show you, I guess, like how I've basically sorted everything, but I will show you, look, I just, I have like buckets and things like that of just like parts I haven't stored or even drawers. This is the most current one. I mean, I've got like the 501st pack in here, some of the new like build a minifigure pieces, a bunch of Spider-Man legs, some capes and just a bunch of other like spare pieces or parts or minifigures that I've had lying around that I just have not been able to sort yet. So as you can see, right now we're not dealing with the neatest situation. We have the tabletop, which I'm using as a dumping ground, and then we have my main cabinet, which is the Alex drawers from Ikea, and then this like tall shelf thing, which basically we've got small parts up here, and then just like two drawers of random parts. Here, everything is actually organized. So at the top, I've got all of the bricks. Even above that, like I've got base plates. We have a lot of plates. There's some specialty plates, some longer bricks, any type of slopes, plants, and random other the larger elements and at the very bottom is just the sort of largest of the large parts so that is how I like to organize pieces definitely by part I would not do it by color I feel like part is a lot easier but then when things get too much that I've got I guess too much of one color that's when I'll sort things out even further what do you think was Lego Marvel's biggest missed opportunity I mean there are a couple of things firstly was missing I guess like the anniversary but I don't necessarily think that every single wave has to have an anniversary celebration all the time I feel Feel like it's become a more regular thing recently and it's starting to feel I guess just a little bit oversaturated and not too interesting anymore so I don't necessarily think that was and I can imagine a lot of people will agree with me on this it's that Lego never made any more No Way Home sets now when they originally I guess I like, got the concept art everything was really really hush hush didn't even know about the villains but at this point right like it's been I guess like maybe like a year and a half maybe not quite a year and a half maybe like a year and a couple of months since I guess we saw the first ever trailer like I'm surprised that at that point like I I guess like whoever I don't really know how it works but I guess like people were like hey can we like make Lego No Way Home sets like is that a thing and like basically take stuff from the trailer like not necessarily Toby and Andrew but I mean you could throw them in last minute I guess at this point depending on what scene you do but I'm really 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 surprised that they didn't do anything like that like in a year I feel like you could turn around a pretty solid set I mean Funko has now just released all of their No Way Home pops which I did buy the Andrew Garfield one I'm really really excited I can certainly see one coming out potentially though in the summer wave of sets this year which I am really really excited for if that is the case but I'm also kind of hesitant just because I'm like well maybe they kind of did miss the boat like is it gonna be worth it I guess it's really dependent on how many infinity saga sets that are gonna come out but yeah definitely missing out on that like that would have made them so much money especially if they could have done it at release which I understand why they couldn't but even now I feel like it would just be like an instant cash grab for them what is today's sponsor I can't believe you would think that I would take like the easiest way out in order to segue to today's sponsor which is Skillshare. Hopefully you guys have noticed that I've been trying to slowly but surely improve my videos overall quality and I guess just like entertainment factor. I've definitely been uploading less because of it and so far I have been really really happy and proud of how all of my recent videos have been turning out. Recently I watched YouTube Success by Marquez Brownlee on Skillshare and it has been so insightful because I've always loved watching his reviews and hearing the process of how he creates things has been really really beneficial to me especially when it came to planning out and visualizing my videos and that has been something that I have been applying constantly recently and it has been a major help. More recently though, I started to take a class by Jake Bartlett on how to achieve like a VHS look in After Effects. I want to try and incorporate more graphics as well as just have more sense of an overall style when it comes to my videos and Skillshare has been incredibly, incredibly helpful and insightful in order to try and achieve this goal. Skillshare have a 30 day risk free trial so you can try out a new hobby or you can refine your skills like I have that are gonna help you reach those 2023 goals. 
which for me personally is to finally hit 100,000 subscribers. The first thousand people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can test it out for yourself and learn something new. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and for helping me develop my overall video quality. Also shout out to It's Brick Nike for helping me with the segue there. What do you hope to add to your Lego collection this year? So I made like it's like an entire video sort of outlining my budget and I sort of strayed a little bit far away from it but I've also been really really good so far like I really just do not have any temptation to buy Lego whatsoever but I'm pretty sure that's like mostly caused just by the price of it but one thing and this is like the number one item on my list Lego Davy Jones like for me I just like I have this thing with minifigures I love them they're my favorite part to collect because I can get a ton of them and like have them not take up a lot of space and because the price of the Black Pearl is just ridiculously expensive I just I really don't have much interest in it anymore purely because of the price point I think it's a great set I would really love to own it but more so I really 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 want to own Davy Jones and really I guess just like round out my Pirates of the Caribbean collection which would mostly be just like all of the characters or almost all of the characters from the original trilogy of films. Have you gotten onto Breaking Bad yet? It's such an incredible show. I have. I just finished season four the other day. My mom and I were watching the finale and my jaw quite literally hit the floor. I instantly started season five afterwards and currently I've only watched one episode. I'm trying to get through it so that I then can go back and watch the last few episodes of Better Call Saul. I am obsessed. Like I absolutely love it. To me, I think I prefer Breaking Bad purely because like the amount of cartel sort of influence really isn't there as much, which was my least favorite part of Better Call Saul. But I just couldn't believe it so much so that I like went back and watched like a couple of like Brian Cranston interviews last night on YouTube as well as like a behind the scenes of that finale episode. And I'm like not going to spoil it because I don't want anyone to be spoiled. Like I know this show is old, but I want to have that same wow factor that I did. When do you think most of us will say enough and stop buying overpriced sets with poor quality control? I mean, for me personally, it's been happening for like the last couple of months. Like last year's Marvel wave, I just did not like what was happening. I really felt like the minifigures were incredibly lackluster and for the prices that they were charging, I just didn't want any part of it. So I just pretty much mostly stopped buying Marvel entirely. I only bought a couple of minifigures that I really wanted just to round out, I guess, like my, my selection of characters and ones from the new movies. There were a couple of really good ones in there and then like I bought my favorite sets which were like the Sanctum and Groot and things like that but like I've already just completely cut back which is really good at least for me because it means I am saving money however overall it is just like a really really bad reflection on Lego and the quality like I just think they've spread themselves absolutely too thin and that is why so many of these mistakes are happening these days and at the end of the day I love the product and I want to still buy the product but I've definitely cut back on things like the Harry Potter is the only theme that I will buy a set from like no matter what. To sum it up really I think it's happening right now. Speaking of the cost of Lego, thoughts on Gringotts price? Unfortunately, it will be too much for me. I am not happy with like the overall price of Gringotts. Now Gringotts is a set that I am very, very excited for. Do not get me wrong. This is something I've wanted for several, several, several years. And honestly, I love the fact as well that like so many people were tagging me things and being like, oh my gosh, Holly, it's happening. Like I absolutely loved it because this really is like the one thing that I've always wanted Lego to make. Like I always wanted Die One Alley. And then I guess like as an adult coming back into Lego, I always wanted to see Gringotts be a set. So finally, Finally, now that it's happening, I am ecstatic. I'm losing my mind, but that price point is the worst. Now for me, I know that I'm gonna buy it anyway, but I just don't like the idea that I like they are making it that much. Now I'm in a very lucky position where I can buy that set and I can get some of the money back because I'm using it for content. It's a tax write-off for me, but like just the retail price for that, I think it really, really makes it a lot harder for many, many people to access. And this is one of the reasons why I really like these like leaks and rumors is because I guess it gives people an idea of what to expect. For example, I guess if someone hears, hey, there's gonna be a giant Gringotts and that's something you want if you really need to it means that you can just completely put off I guess the rest of the wave which I feel like is probably going to happen for a lot of people because 430 US dollars is a lot of money in Australian dollars I'm predicting the price is probably going to sit around like 700 to 800 because like the train's 800 and the castle was 700 and I feel like there's like Gringotts is going to be somewhere in the middle and that is ridiculous that is a week's rent in Sydney and that to me is just insane because you can look at the rest of the buildings and see that this could have been done on a smaller scale but there's also no doubt in my mind that this set is going to look absolutely flawless. I trust the Lego designers for Harry Potter so much. They have made incredible sets. I mean, maybe there's going to be some lacking minifigure detail, but overall, I really feel like this is going to just absolutely blow me away, just like Diagon Alley did and just like the Microscale Hogwarts Castle did. And I am really, really, really excited to see how this turns out. What is your most unique Lego Harry Potter item? Now, there are a couple 
ones that I feel like can take this title. Firstly, I have three out of four of the like Singapore promotional boxes. They're all sealed. I made a video on them a couple of months ago and that I think is certainly one of the more rarer things since it was only available in Asia and unfortunately I'm only missing one of them. However, there is one other item that I think is far more unique but I didn't really want to say it first because I don't even know if I've still got it. So as we all know when you buy a Lego game and pre-order you get like a special item so that is exactly what I did when Harry Potter years five through seven or maybe it was even one through four I honestly can't remember one of them did like a promo in Australia where you got like one of the little four keychains that you could get which in my case was Slytherin but it also came with this Lego Harry Potter branded Gryffindor scarf now my sister and I made a deal I was like I'll take the keychain she'll take the scarf I'm pretty sure we still have this somewhere and there is only one image online that I can even find of it. I don't think it was available in any other country, which I think is why it's like so exclusive and rare. If I can find that, that by far is going to be my most exclusive and rare Lego Harry Potter item and like out of all the things, it's not even like that exciting. When slash why do you have to wear glasses sometimes or is it because it looks good? No, it is certainly not because it looks good. I spend a lot of time looking at computer screens and I went and got an eye test a couple of years ago and they were like, yeah, you need like a very slight prescription and like I was just basically like look I, I really need blue light glasses because there will be sometimes when my eyes just like feel incredibly strained or like my eyes like cannot focus at all because I've been staring at a screen it literally happened to me last night while I was editing so I have these blue light glasses admittedly I do use them as a prop sometimes just for, I guess, like dramatic effect or completing the look, but I genuinely do use these. Often I'll sort of put them on towards the end of the day after I've been staring at a screen for too long. Like even now I can feel like my eyes getting like a little lazy and a little blurry or either that or I just need to like get a tear out or whatever quickly. Oh. But yeah, these are slight prescription Ray-Ban glasses with like a blue light tint so that I can just like look at a screen and actually be able to focus a little better. How are you doing with integrating running into your fitness routine? Shout out to you, Joe. I absolutely love talking about like the gym and fitness now. I've become one of those people. Running is honestly one of the hardest things that I have been doing. I have never been a runner. I have been a dancer. I could dance for ages, for hours in fact. But if you tell me to run, I'm screwed. Like my goals are pretty much like literally the bare minimum. I want to be able to run a kilometer and not feel like I have to stop. And then once I've done that, I want to get to a mile and then like two kilometers and then three kilometers. And then eventually I want to be able to at least run like three to five kilometers without stopping. But I've also been doing a lot of like my old dance technique exercises as well as just like random bits of ballet when I go to the gym and been like stretching and things like that. So hopefully I guess like my cardio fitness is sort of starting to get back up a little bit, but man, and running is the absolute worst, but I also really enjoy it. It's like one of my favorite cardio methods, so I'm sort of at a crossroads here. How much do you pay for a storage unit? It's something I'm looking into. Honestly, if you can avoid it, do not get a storage unit for your Lego. In my case, I still live at home. So for me, the option is I guess like either move out and pay rent, which in Sydney is incredibly expensive and like most places there's a rental crisis. So didn't really want to do that. So I was like, oh, I could get a storage unit, which for me personally is quite a small storage unit. I think it's like a half of a like car garage or whatever and I pay $200 a month which I'm very fortunate that at least right now my mum splits that with me because a lot of my like old childhood dance costumes that at the moment she doesn't really want to get rid of are in there so I only pay $100 a month currently but that will go up to $200 but even then $200 a month for me is a lot cheaper I also just throw a lot of stuff in there like it's a really good place for me to just temporarily put something in like I threw like Christmas decorations or whatever in there but before even taking that step certainly look at like what sets you can sell and I guess just like also what other things in your life can you get rid of like I did a major declutter and I still just like ran out of room to the point that it stressed me out and that is why I bought a storage unit but I also just don't think the extra cost is really really worth it unless you absolutely need to or I guess can justify it to yourself in some way I will tell you though it is absolutely very very handy though it's not going to be something that I keep forever what's the best $150 and below Harry Potter 2023 set so far I mean Technically, we've only seen six. And instantly, it's the Triwizard Tournament second task set. That thing is amazing. I cannot wait to actually like get to experience it in real life. But even then, I think that that could still like hold the title after we see the Summer Wave. Because majority of the Summer Wave is still quite expensive. Like, I think Dobby's gonna be cursed, honestly. Like, I don't think Dobby's gonna make the cut. Potentially, I guess, Expecto Patronum can. Like, I know people were saying maybe it could be like Lupin's Classroom or like from the Order of the Phoenix, uh, like with Dudley or even like Rumor 
requirement type of thing. But I just like, I guess I don't think that it's going to be overall that interesting. Battle of Hogwarts has a lot of potential, but it really, I guess, just depends on what it looks like. Like for now, that Triwizard Tournament set is a really, really solid set, especially at that price point. But also what happened to like really solid, cheap Lego Harry Potter sets? Like where are our $20 sets that were just like absolutely killing the game? I miss those. They were fantastic. Like I want another girl's bathroom type of thing. I love that set. <laughs> but those are all of the questions I picked for today. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted one. I had a fantastic time reading them and mentally as well, I answered them to myself. It was really nice just to have like a nice casual, relaxed sit down video in comparison, I guess, to the more like higher edited type of things that I've been putting out recently. And again, as well, thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys are having a fantastic January. Thanks so much for watching this video and until next time, I'll see you later.